What's cracking, people? Angelic Mayhem here, and welcome to Dungeon Defenders 2. Uh, this is this is a tricky one. This is going to be a state of the beta. However, we have some issues here, so it's going to take me a little bit to kind of get through this. Um, number one, the biggest issue that we have at the moment is that this game, for technical reasons that I really don't want to get into... I'll kind of talk about them a little bit, but for some reason, this game keeps overheating my PC, okay? Now, specifically, it's overheating the CPU, which is an 8-core CPU, okay? So, it should be able to take practically anything that you throw at it. The problem is, for some reason, Dungeon Defenders 2 is coded specifically to only use 4 cores, and it is just, it is applying so much information to those four cores that it's causing my computer to overheat and shut itself down. Uh, so we're going to have to film, film this thing in stages. Uh, so the first part is that uh, I just want to kind of give you an, an idea of what this game actually is. Okay, this is a 3D game, obviously, and it is a tower defense game. Um, once we actually get into the game, which will be a little bit later on, uh, you'll see that you're actually able to set up uh, if you look at my bottom nav bar, numbers 5, 6, and 7 are different kinds of turrets that you can set up, uh, turrets and shields, and that will do damage to your enemies. Uh, now you also, of course, are you, so you're wandering about inside the world and you're, you're getting a creep's eye view of what's going on. And so 1, 2, 3, and 4 revolve around uh, your magical powers, you know, like 1 is like this super swipe that you can do uh, to really cause a lot of damage. Number 4 is a way to kind of heal yourself, so on and so forth. Alright, so these are, this is the kind of game that you're going to be playing here. Um, now in the meantime... So this is, when you first log in, this is where you're going to be, which is kind of like this little um, tavern, all right? And they have this war recruiter here. That's where you're going to go to actually get into a game. Over here is a chick who will allow you to upgrade your items. Now, her deal is that, uh, so, you know, let me actually go in here. Um, it brings up your inventory, right? And then, so let's say that I didn't like the shield that I had. Um, I wanted to upgrade to a different kind of shield. I could put the shield here in her little machine and then begin adding other things to, um, to basically this shield, okay? Now, it's not a vagrant story sort of situation where, like, for instance, these boots... Uh, let me find something better for you here. Okay, so these boots, see it says plus 1.4 mana restored every 5 seconds, okay? It's not like that 1.4 mana will somehow be added to the shield, okay? What it does is it kind of takes, um, see where it says item power 18? It takes that information and then just begins maxing out the level of whatever this item is to the point where you can then upgrade it yourself. So, you can never add things necessarily to the shield. You can just kind of make this shield a little bit better. I think that's a missed opportunity, but in the same breath, I think it's cool that you can upgrade the shield. I like that mechanic a lot, so it's kind of a mixed bag. But I really wish that, you know, if I had an item like this that was 1.4 mana, and I wanted a shield that upgraded mana, that there was some way to make that happen. Uh, this game is heavily dependent upon your items, okay? So having a blue item versus having a green item mean, it makes a big difference when you actually get into the game. All right, so uh, pirate ship, right? And then there's these people over here. This is, again, a beta, so, you know, some of the stuff has been deactivated until, you know, like the game finally launches, and that's what that is. This guy's a shop. This guy over here is a shop. Um, this is a hero manager. There's another one up there, so we'll get to that in a second. This is just kind of a place where you can come in and, you know, test your new build if you'd like change, uh, you know, like your weapons or armor or whatever, and you want to say, uh, here you go to report a bug. And then there's these other NPCs here, which really make me kind of excited about this game because, I mean, right now there is zero plot to this game. Um, you are basically just playing a tower defense game. But these other people, like the stubborn old man and these two chicks over here, they kind of make me think that, you know, in the future, there will be some sort of plot or story or something to kind of drive this thing along. Uh, so now, the last thing that I'm going to show you is what is basically, well, let me, 
hero manager, you you have a multiple set of heroes and you can swap in between them. All right, that's the the obvious. Thing. And uh, there is only four classes available at the moment. However, if we go to create hero, there will be six total when it comes time for the game to actually launch. Um, this elf is totally ranged, um, also mostly totally ranged. And then this monk, okay, he is mostly melee, but he has a bunch of ranged stuff attached to him. So he's kind of like a nice little hybrid. And then the squire is just a straight up melee, uh, hack and slash. Get out of that. Again, oops. And then we're going to go over here to the forge. Um, again, this is going to give you the option. So you can, you know, take a look at your character. You'll have an opportunity to upgrade yourself, but the the specificity with which you can upgrade yourself isn't there, okay? It, it's very general. Like, for instance, you know, I, I like for this guy um, that you can have Vengeance, which is damage taken by a spike blockade, which is one of the, um, consider it a tower that goes out. Um, it's literally like a like a portable shield that just kind of sits on the ground. And if somebody walks up to it, it will send out these spikes that do damage. So if they begin to attack it, it will return some of that damage to them, okay? But there is no way to really upgrade your character other than getting a handful of weapons that are all similar in a way that is specific to your play style. So if you like to be hack and slash, there is no real way to kind of get in there and say, okay, I wanna be just the greatest swordsman ever in history. Like there is no mechanic for that. So I kind of I kind of wish that they went in that direction. You know what I mean? All right, uh, down here, um, titles, and then this should read codices, but it reads codexes, I don't know why. Um, it basically, as you do things, like for instance, um, reach level five on hero, and this one is have a powerful item that should read green, a green item in each of your slots. Um, you know, these open up as you do different things. Um, and then your codices are literally books that you find floating around the world. And then when you pick up the book, uh, you know, these begin to fill in. So they're just kind of collectibles. But now we go over here to inventory. And again, the only way truly to upgrade your character is to pick up various items. Like for instance, all right, so this one says enemies killed by defenses, which is your towers, drop 5% more gold. And then I have the shield, enemies killed by heroes are worth 4% more experience. And what I did was I tried to find as many different items that would buff my XP so that I could level up as quickly as possible. All right, so that's kind of where I was going there. And the reason for that is because everything in terms of new levels that you can play is tied to uh, this guy right here. All right, now let's get into this. This guy, his job is to put you into a war room, at which point you can choose what level you want to play and then play it. Um, basically, you choose one of these things over here. Now, I'm a level 11 guy, but for some reason here in the beta, when I click on levels 10 to 15, it won't let me in. And I, I believe that that's tied to the fact that I unlock this with my first character, but then I didn't actually play any of these 10 to 15 levels. So now that I'm trying it with a second character, it, it, it somehow is screwed up, I think is what's happening there. But if I were to show you one, which I will in a little bit, um, we're going to go into the 5 to 10 level. Now, find group is multiplayer, private game is single player. However, both of them are online, okay? You must be signed in online, and it's constantly sending information out to the servers because in order to have the multiplayer, you're using these same characters in the multiplayer side of things, so it has to retain that information to make sure that you're not cheating. Because you know you could alter the files on your local desktop to make yourself like a level 50 whatever, and then suddenly log in the multiplayer and be like, oh, I'm the greatest guy in history. So you have to play this online. So even when you're playing the single player, there are times where like you'll you'll jitter step, you know, and suddenly be, you know, five feet ahead of where you were because you're dealing with the with the online issues that you would normally face in a multiplayer game, you're also facing them in your single player. That's ragingly annoying, okay? In addition to that, let's talk about multiplayer in general. Okay, all of the bad things that happen in multiplayer happen here too. And so if you go into find a group, it will launch you into a war room with, let's say, two or three other people. 
At which point, you'll go up to this guy again, okay, and you'll you'll try to log in to, you know, like level 5 or 10, and you'll have to sit there. And you'll be waiting for the other people who are in your room to go out here, you know, like they'll be bouncing around or jumping up and down on the pirate ship, or they'll be over here working on their, you know, like on their different items, which can take 10 to 15 minutes. And so you have to sit here the whole time waiting for your group to finally pull it together, come over here and all ready up at once, which is really, is really tough. I do not enjoy that at all. Um, once you get into the multiplayer game, you are now trapped in a room with a bunch of morons who are all doing ridiculous stuff and none of them are paying attention. And, you know, uh, they're just... I don't know. Uh, maybe that's just some beta stuff. Maybe it will change in the future. But for right now, multiplayer is really an unpleasant experience uh, in my in my time with that. So, all right. So now, I'm going to take a little bit of time to let my processor cool down. I'm going to then launch into an actual game, and I'll show you some gameplay footage. So I'll be back in just a moment. All right, and we're back. So, um, I have made some changes to the settings on my computer. Uh, currently, my CPU is running at 70 degrees Celsius. The TJ Maxx for this particular CPU is 90. So what I did was I went in in my CMOS and I changed it so that the computer automatically shuts down at 85. Um, so hopefully, we won't have any sort of interruption. Uh, so that's where we're at at the moment. Now, so here we are inside of the actual game. Uh, as you can see, it's very tower defensive. Uh, there are paths that the creeps will be coming down. And I've already taken the liberty of going around and actually setting up all of my traps. Um, so, it, for instance, if we go over here, this is one of the spawn points. And I have uh, two of my um, you know, little shooty things here. And if I click on six... You can see that I can then plant down this little wall thing here. And we're going to set it up so that it's pointed this way. So that as they come up here to try to get at these cannons, it will then do damage to them. Um, you know, based on, you know, if they do damage to it, it will do even more damage and so on and so forth. Um, I also have this cannon up here. None of these levels, at least the early levels, have any cannons provided or anything like that. So you are solely responsible for the defense of your different areas. Um, I've played this one a couple of times. So this is kind of like the best uh, setup that I have found so far. Um, basically, you know, uh, again, it's just setting up all the different cannons and some, you know, key points where, you know, a as, as these guys are coming through this choke point, they then have to deal with this. And the whole time they're taking cannon fire. So, you know, th that's kind of, you know, obviously what you are looking for in a tower defense situation. All right, so now the only other thing that I want to point out is that um, each of the levels has... What are these um, these little pre-made uh, setup areas? Okay, so for instance, if I were to hit E, it would set off all of the dynamite sticks that are over here and kill any creeps that are in the area. Okay, so I'm actually going to launch the creeps now. And the creeps are on their way, right? So I'm going to wait for them to get to their area. And press E. And, of course, this is a time delay sort of thing, so you have to anticipate when they're going to be in that area, and boom, there you go. Now all those creeps are dead. Now, again, you have four lines that you have to keep an eye out for, so prepping is everything in this. You want to make sure that you are, you know, from the beginning, 100% uh, ready to go in terms of, you know, setting up your choke points and things like that. Um, you don't want to have situations like over here, where this guy is away from all of the cannons and you don't have any way to actually get to him and he can just continuously fire on your defenses. All right, so now, get away from this. Now, one of the other things is that, again, this is a 3D world. So um, if you are, let's say, you know, swiping at this guy, you can see I can push him around, assuming I can land the punch. There we go. And if you accidentally push him off, Let's say he lands down here. He's just going to go this way. And if you don't have any cannons ready for that, now you're in trouble again. Okay. Uh, this is another one of those things. If I were to hit E, boom, it sends up a little rocket and kills that guy off. And you just want to constantly be keeping an eye out for, like right now, my main core is under attack. 
And if I hit my two, now all these guys will turn on me instead of my core. Uh, however, my core was destroyed. So that is um, the end. If at any point in time your core is destroyed, then you know that is obviously the end of the game. The side cores that we are you know keeping an eye out for, they are for alternative routes. So for instance, oh that's not a good one. Okay, so this one up here, right? actually controls this gate. So if that were to fall, there would then become a third set of, oh, I'm sorry, a fourth set of creeps that would be coming out of this gate. And those creeps would come down this way, join up with these creeps from over here, and then, you know, obviously hit up your main core, all right? Now you can see in the upper left-hand corner, it says map ends in 75 seconds. Um, that is whether you beat it or not, that's usually how the game ends. And then it will take you back out of it. So what I wanna do, is and you know you kind of wander around and you say okay well you know there's like a loot drop over here so we're going to go and pick up that loot drop none of these green or blue things matter at the moment because we lost the level so we don't have to pick up any of those uh but i think everything is basically picked up so we don't have to worry about that and uh so we're going to hit g to kind of expedite all this and whether you win or lose you're going to end up at this screen right here you can actually flip through if you have companions um then you know the team stats will be different than player stats obviously but since it's just us um the player stat is the same and uh not really sure what other information is i mean you know it kind of tells you the greatest things that you found but you know whatever i'm going to switch over to replay map so that you know i can actually show you um a full setup and then we'll do it the right way Temperature holding at 80 degrees ish. All right, so the very first thing, whenever you start off a level, you're gonna have to hunt down one of these chests. Uh, the chest will give you your initial burst of green gems. And it's with those green gems that you'll be able to set up your first pieces of equipment. Uh, like that. And then, I also want one up here. Like such. Uh, it's a little tricky trying to get this thing to cooperate, but there we go. Much better. And we'll go over here and do the same. And literally, if you set these traps up just right, then you don't have to do anything at all from henceforth. Uh, you, you can literally just set up traps, and then at each stage, you'll need to set up additional traps. Um, so, you know, like you won't have enough at the beginning just to sit back and let the game run itself. But with each stage, you know, you, you set up the next group of traps and then you're ready to go. All right, so I'm only going to put one here this time. And then now we go back and we have to guard our main area. Uh, so that this one, we kind of want to tip this way. To get any creeps that kind of sneak in behind here, they'll be standing right there. So we want that one to handle it like that. This one will do our primary damage heading in this direction, and then this one is just kind of the cleanup, and it should be aimed for the middle. And there we go. We've used up all of our green, and this one is now set. Uh, I'm going to send the creeps. There we go. And then wait at the dynamite. And I want the green guy in the circle, because he's the only one who truly matters. E, 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 E. There we go. Now, we'll call it, we'll strike that up as a beta thing. Now, of course, he's doing a lot of damage to me, but there are other, like, if I use my one, then I could do, like, a major swipe on him, and I don't have to take all that damage. But it's just kind of giving you an idea of, you know, the limitations of being a melee guy. The range characters are very interesting. Um, you can literally, like, especially as the the elf, uh, that little elf ranger person who I showed you earlier, she can just stand here and nail him, turn around, nail them, turn around, nail anybody who's coming out of there, guard over here, and you don't have to move at all, which is actually the preferred method. I, I really think that that's the better way to go. I gotta come over here before this guy demolishes. One, there we go, major swipe. 
Now, obviously, with the melee guy, he can take out, you know, 20, 30 guys at once. So, you know, it, it depends on your play style and how you like to play it. But, you know, you definitely want to try out, like, a little bit of everybody. Now, make sure that you pick up your loot. There we go. And then you also need to keep in mind that you only have a certain amount of space in your inventory. Now, that's obviously planned because, you know, they want... Oh, they killed off my turret. That sucks. Now that I knocked him... Oh, well, he died. But if I had knocked him down there, then he just would have continued moving around and attacked from another angle. So... Which I really like about the game. I think that's pretty cool. Although, every now and then, someone will get trapped on the gate and just kind of be hanging out there because they're still on the old path. And there's a little bit of confusion. So, there we go. Alright, so now we're back to the build phase. We go back, we get another set of greens. Pick up some of our loot. And we can actually go back, so we can uh, actually begin upgrading these now. And we want to put back the shield that they broke. Uh, you can upgrade this shield as well, but we're not going to do that. Here we go. Double shield, and then we're going to set this up down here this time. And we're going to set this one up here, but then turn it around so that it fires back in this direction. And hopefully that will keep it from being destroyed. Uh, these guys held up really nice. I don't have to worry about them. Every now and then, I, I like to throw a shield out in front of every cannon, but you will eventually run out of cannons to throw out there. So, you know, it, it, it's actually a little bit better if you can let your cannon stand alone to let them. All right, so we'll upgrade him. Now, you'll notice not only did that upgrade him to the next level, but it also brought him back to full health. Um, and that's going to be, you know, your, your primary thing. Put this here. And I'm just going to point him back in this direction. Wow, these guys took some heavy damage. That's odd. Alright, so then this goes here like that. Over here. And I'm out of greens, so I think we are good. Alright, so we're going to send the next line. And there we go. See if I can make this work the second time. Now, one of the things is I actually went out on Steam and I was taking a look at like the you know like what people were saying about this game, and most of the complaints were about how um, in Dungeon Defenders One the game was significantly different in the in terms of the way that it played. Now I can't speak to that because I did not play Dungeons Defenders One. Uh, what's great about the melee guys, you can actually aggro these people by force. So if I hit two, they will then aggro me specifically, follow me in this direction, and you can kind of kite them out in front of your cannons, uh, which is a really nice way. Now, if something drops back there, like way back there, you can't actually go and get it. So sometimes it's a little dangerous to actually play it that way, but you do want to leave a little bit of, a, of lead room. Die. There we go. Pick up this ring. I pick up everything at the moment because, I mean, it's it's actually quite easy to upgrade your stuff. Here, wait, let's do this. Um, but if you don't have a full set of inventory items, then you're going to be in trouble. i got to come over here. This guy is... Ah, he killed my thing. That sucks. I thought I could save it. I like coming in from behind and just cutting people in half. That's fun. Plus, you can actually push them up towards your, you know, like, whatever your cannons are or whatever. And that's a good way to, uh, to make them die faster. You come up here and make sure that everything is alright. Indeed, it appears to be. This guy's still over here attacking. Look at this. You're slaying me, dude. There we go. Alright, so I think that gives you an understanding of what the game is all about. Um, the final thing that I'm going to say about this game, and this is in, in terms of deciding whether you actually want to invest in it or not, is that this is eventually going to become a free-to-play game. And so, some, very few, but some of the complaints on Steam were why on earth would you actually pay to play a free-to-play game? You know, you just 
play it whenever eventually it comes out. Well, obviously, if you have an impatience problem, then you know you would actually want to play this uh, early, and so you know that might be a thing. But more along the lines of you know if you want to help them actually build the game and make it better, you know this is kind of like a Kickstarter sort of situation where you are helping by donating to the game for which you get to play it. Um, and it is in fact in a beta. I know in the bottom right hand corner it says early alpha, but that's not really what it is. Anybody who's played video games long enough will tell you that this is well along its way. And while it has a few hang-ups here and there, for the most part, it works just fine. So anyway, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please click the like button, share it with your friends, or subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content like this in the future. I'm Angelic Mayhem, and I'll see you next time.